Hello, dear ones. My name is Aria, and welcome to Deepwater Yaya. If you're new to the channel, I post videos that offer support for diverse bodies in troubled times. We cover a lot of ground, go to a lot of different places, and I really hope you find something that speaks to your heart. Today, we're going to be focusing on a reaction video to information about myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome, which is the disease that I live with and have for almost my entire life. If you like this content, please do all the things, you know, click subscribe, comment, like it, share, check out the links in the description to my other work and the Patreon membership. All of it helps. And by the way, the Patreon membership starts at only $1 a month. So you can, if you really do like this work, then please think about supporting it. As I mentioned, today's video is focusing on myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome. And specifically, I'm going to be watching a video produced by Jessica Kelgren Frozard, who is a wonderful YouTuber who is also disabled and lives with chronic illness. And she's queer and she has a wonderful wife named Claudia and a great, wonderful son named Rupert. And she does these wonderful things with her hair and her makeup and her clothes. I just adore her. Go check her out. She, her content is amazing. And I'm going to be watching this video, which is actually labeled as severe ME. Now I know I don't have that. ME comes on a spectrum. I'm sure she's going to explain it. ME comes on a spectrum and I'm not in the most severe because the most severe involves organs and often completely bedridden People have to live in dark rooms and have almost no stimulation just to survive. So it, I don't qualify as that, and I'm not gatekeeping myself as so many of us living with invisible disabilities do. I'm more in the mild to moderate section. Uh, I, it, it, I think at different times in my life, I've probably gone on either side of that line. So we're going to watch and we're going to see what Jessica has to say about it. Have you heard of the illness ME? Well, if not, it's the most prevalent illness you've never heard of, with between 17 to 24 million people suffering worldwide. Encephalomyelitis, formerly known as chronic fatigue syndrome, isn't ah. just an incredibly hard thing to say, it's also a complex and chronic immune disease that profoundly limits the health and ability of patients. There are, in ah. fact, four types of ME, as it has a fluctuating spectrum of severity, and people with the condition can move between them. There's mild, which allows people to work or go to school with difficulty, and generally at the expense of other areas of life. Moderate, which leaves sufferers mm -hmm. housebound and often using a walking aid. Severe, where patients must be bedbound, use a wheelchair and rely on carers. And very severe, a stage at which people are not only bedbound, but also unable to speak, often incredibly sensitive to light and tube fed Well-meaning, but still irritating. I'm chronically fatigued. Oh, we're all a bit tired. Why? So perhaps we should begin. What is Emmy? With some things it is not. Just yawning a lot. Wanting to have more sofa days. Staying home from work so you can sunbathe. Skipping things because we just don't want to go. Being too tired to do boring things. Oof. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about this because this is something I have run into. Uh, I don't even know how many times in my life. I, I, I think it's, it's just an ongoing theme. And it's one of the reasons why calling a disease chronic fatigue syndrome is a really bad idea because chronic fatigue can actually be a symptom in a whole spectrum of other illnesses. It's, you know, a lot of people with cancer or going through cancer treatment uh, or recovering from cancer treatment suffer from chronic fatigue, long COVID. Look at, look at what's happening with so many people who are, are dealing with long COVID. Chronic fatigue syndrome can be a symptom, or sorry, chronic fatigue can become a symptom in someone else's illness. But labeling chronic fatigue syndrome as a disease can get very complicated, not just for that reason, but because living in the everyday world, a capitalist society, we're all tired. Oh, I'm so tired. I have chronic fatigue syndrome. It is really painful, very hurtful, and completely counterproductive. And it very much belittles those of us who are living with the illness. So switching to using the term myalgic encephalomyelitis or ME is a good move. And in the UK and in Canada, I think we're trying to do that. I'm not sure what's going on in the States right now. Maybe I'll check, but it's, it's, it's tricky. So please just be aware that when you hear, if you're hearing that, or if you're trying to use the term chronic fatigue, 
please let people know that it it's either a symptom, maybe you just need to get some more rest, or I actually have the disease. ME symptoms, which are often made worse by standing, are persistent fatigue for six months or more, non-restorative sleep and or sleep disturbance, brain fog or cognitive impairment, neurological abnormalities, joint pain, headaches, migraines, muscle pain, dizziness, inflamed lymph nodes, and a great sensitivity to lights, sounds, smells, chemicals, which can include medications and certain food. And can I just mention what she said right off the top, which is can often be aggravated or made worse by standing. I have had chronic fatigue syndrome or ME since I was 11 years old. It was 1983. It's been almost 40 years now. And I didn't know this until maybe 10 years ago. About 20 years ago, I read this tiny little paragraph. It was like two sentences in a book about ME that said, slow walking is always easier than standing and it was in this paragraph that was just sort of explaining that and that was like this revelation to me it made so much sense for why i i do this when i stand in a line at the bank although most, most people don't stand in lines at banks anymore but you know what i'm saying like anytime i'm in a queue i'm usually swaying back and forth after reading that i gave myself permission to start sitting down on the ground in public because I was just not interested in aggravating my symptoms. It was mind blowing to me. And only about 10 years ago, did I realize that that was true all the time. And I was reading another book about chronic fatigue syndrome, talking about standing at kitchen counters. And I went, what, how, oh, why do I stand at a kitchen counter? I now have a stool. And it is a revelation. I have actually also bought a camp stool for going out in public. I will sit down in long queues. And this really helped during the pandemic. In fact, everybody during the pandemic who saw me would point at me and go, that's a fabulous idea. And I'd be like, hey. So it is something important to remember. And if you have someone in your life with myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome, encourage them to sit down. Encourage them to not spend time standing. I also got a stool for the shower. It's fantastic. Importantly, post-exertional malaise, the yes. worsening of symptoms following even minor physical or mental exertion, yes. with symptoms typically worsening 12 to 48 hours after the activity and lasting for days or even weeks, which is what catches you out because it's not right oh. after, it's a little later on. In severe cases, ME mm. can result in complete organ system shutdown. So let's just mention that as well because it is really important. Post-exertion malaise is unique to ME and it is weird and it can be very interesting to learn how to work with and it's one of the reasons why I am sitting here struggling to make YouTube videos and keep the rest of my life together because this one little activity, I feel fine today when I do it. It's okay. But tomorrow or the next day, I, I, it's, and I don't know how this is going to do to me long term. So, you know, let's find out. I don't mean to scare you, merely to impress upon you the gravity of this condition, that it's not just being tired. 25% of those diagnosed with ME have the most severe form, meaning that they are trapped in darkened rooms with no light, sound, touch. I've been there for a different reason, it turns out, but I've been there and it really, really sucks. There isn't a way to, to underplay that. There is no sugar coating that. One thing that people don't realize is that these severe symptoms can prevent people from accessing medical care and support. How do you go to a &E when your heart starts playing up if you know that the bright lights, smells and noise are going to make your pain worse? So this is also something that happens, not and, and it can be the entire spectrum, but we're talking specifically about people with severe ME. If you have to live in a darkened room, if you are so weakened and fatigued and sensitive that you require medical transport to get to the simplest of appointments, and you can't imagine heading into an environment that isn't controlled and adapted to your particular needs, it can be incredibly 
frightening to think about leaving the house. It can be impossible to think about leaving the house. I have that issue with uh, the mild to moderate ME that I live with. You know, there are people, I have been labeled controlling and a control freak my entire life. And it's been absolutely unfair because it's not that I am a controlling person. It's that I need certain accommodations, but I also just need to know a level of awareness about the situation that I'm moving into. And people don't under, understand that. And it, it can be very, very difficult. And it can make accessing medical care or any kind of care or social activity or anything impossible if you've got severe and mild to mod moderate, very difficult. Add to that the isolation. God, the isolation. Watching everyone else you know doing fun stuff, living their lives, having a whale of a time, forgetting that you even exist. And then if they do invite you to something and you spend all day getting ready for it, because it takes all day, not because you're a diva, but because you have but, energy issues. And you yes. have to sit down every five minutes, plus you have brain fog. So who the hell knows? Because the mascara is gone now. So you spent all day getting ready for it. And then you're at the front door and you realize, oh, God. oh my God, I can't. I literally can't step out the house because I won't have the energy to step back in. If I go to this party, this dinner, these drinks with friends, I'm going to have an energy yeah. crash and not be able to come home. Yeah. I won't be safe. And even if I'm safe, I won't be composed. They're all going to see me. And friend, if you have never seen an energy crash, it isn't necessarily what you'd expect. I mean, maybe you're expecting a wind-up yeah. doll who suddenly just falls on its side or your own experience of slipping into sleepiness, a kind of slow, gradual progression. It is neither and it is both. For me, it's being way too over the top, life and soul of the party, yes. number one hint of yes. crash. Getting weirdly slurry and yes. sloppy though I haven't actually been drinking or anything and then just, oh, bad. I've been She's at places where my legs back. suddenly She's stop working and I've had to get help walking out. It takes about five out. minutes, which is not I, enough time to get yeah. yourself to safety. It's merely enough time for other people to cushion your landing and guide you to a chair. It's pretty embarrassing, especially <laughs> for waiters. And it's understandable to be scared about that happening or to be worried about your future, which is why depression and anxiety may occur as That's a what I'm talking about. any chronic debilitating illness. As you can imagine, this is only compounded in people who live at the mm. more extreme end of ME, who can for many years or even for life suffer as a result of being effectively trapped inside their bodies, their beds and their bedroom. I never leave the house alone. Like, never. And I would say my energy issues are now mild but i would not trust myself to leave the house alone. i can say i can't live alone but i can leave the house alone okay that was really good and i want to encourage everyone to go watch the whole video um it really does break down me uh, really well in terms of who can get it what the treatments are or not but mostly what it does is really raise the flag for more research needed. And I think Jessica did a very smart thing in focusing a little bit on the severe ME because when a disease can cause organ failure and can literally be listed as a cause of death on a death certificate, it can get a little bit more attention. Uh, it's it, This is a profound debilitating illness, whether you live with it on a fairly temporary basis in your life or like myself, uh, live lifelong with it and it mm, oh it just does its thing with every single part of my life uh, you can understand that it really does have a major impact on people individually and our society so again check out Jessica's work thank you so much for being here with me today have a beautiful day